Hello and welcome to this episode of Fitness Unfiltered. Um, I am Mike Hobbs and I'm joined by my wonderful co-hosts Dan and Emma and if it sounds a little bit like I've never hosted a podcast before um, it's because this is a somewhat unplanned episode. Uh, what we were going to do today was record an episode of Fitness Unfiltered feat a guest um, but we've been on Zoom for 25 no 35 minutes and it would appear that the guest has not turned up so we should just I think at on. that point yeah like that's an interesting question though how long do you wait how long like, yeah, if you wait. were gonna meet like if you were on a first date how long do you wait until you just like I've been stood up I think it depends how badly you want it to well, happen. He doesn't, know us very, he doesn't know us very well personally either. So oh, exactly. It could be like the blind date thing where you're sitting there at the table. They walk in or in this case, investigate. Or, out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So well, maybe, maybe he, he just joined the in. waiting room and then was like, nah. Not, no, these three. not feeling no, that. We would have nah. been informed if he or she joined the waiting room. Um, but yeah, anyway, so here we are. We thought what we would do is have a bit of a... A bit of a wrap up podcast for 2020 because our plans for series three of Fitness Unfiltered have been somewhat derailed. And that's, well, it's my fault. It's not You're really so my selfish. Fault. Yeah, it's your no, fault. I'm so selfish. So, yeah. as you will know from listening to the podcast, we had big plans for this big new series. We had a load of guests lined up, loads of really amazing ones, and a few of whom we managed to get on and released um, and had a great schedule of packed timetable for getting all these podcasts recorded. And then I went and I got COVID, didn't I? Um, and it kind of went... Oh, typical. I know. And it, there, was, there was all that... I did that passive aggressive thing where I said, oh, guys, don't worry. Like, you can go ahead and, and do the podcast without me if you like. It's oh, you fine. would have been furious if I'd you I'd have that. been livid. So, but can um, I just say, if I ever say that, I genuinely mean it. And like, if I didn't want you to do it, I'd be like... Yeah, but there's the difference... <laughs> Because when Mike says it, he would actually be furious. When you say it, it's like, do you know what? I've got no interest in it this week. You just guys just crack on. I'd really love to change my character. But it's really interesting, actually, because the other day, a friend of mine sent, um, he came came down and dropped off some stuff. I mean, he lived really, really far away. And he dropped off some oats that they make at his gym for for me to try and to review on Instagram. Gave them to uh, Jamie Alderton. And I um, did not receive the oats. Why? Because they ate them. Um, and I was obviously furious that that um, basically Jamie and David had eaten my oats. And what well, that was... doesn't sound like something Jamie would do. I know, right? And then I was speaking to Jamie about this and saying like, and, and he was like, yeah, but realistically, when were you going to come and pick them up? And they'd have been gone off by the time you'd have been able to, to come and so pick them up. Very oh, ap- apologetic. Very yeah, apologetic. I'm sorry, oats. Will no, they were off. prepped oats. So they were prepped. Right. Into, like, no, they were, it wasn't like a bag of oats. It was like little pots of, of like portions of oats, like overnight oats kind of thing. And I was like, no, because I will show you my message thread with Jason where I was actually planning when to pick them up. And listen to what I said in this message thread. And I genuinely have no recollection of this. And this is no defense to him because he had no idea that I had actually said this. Was this one of those moments where you're so blinded by rage, you forget what you say? No, it's one of those moments where you're so, where you don't mean what you say that you don't remember saying it. So I actually said, yeah, if that's cool, I'm easy. I don't want to trouble anyone, so you guys can always eat them otherwise. And Do I, they, not, they don't even like, know you. Yeah, and I was like, I can't, I can't believe I said that, but I obviously didn't mean it. <laughs> obviously, because that, that kind of thing comes across really well over text as well. Mm-hmm. Like, you can tell what people mean really well. I know, right? You, you are <laughs> so... the king of passive-aggressive. I know, but I don't, I try so hard not to be that then in so trying to compose messages to purposely not be passive aggressive, it comes across as passive aggressive. And then because everyone's expecting that passive aggression, when I'm not being passive aggressive, they think I'm being passive aggressive anyway. And then I'm like, no, I actually did mean that. Do you know what the moral of this story is? Say what you mean. Yeah. And do you know what I was about to say? 
you are a prime example of that because I have to dance this dance in between the two of you. I'm like, Mike, does he really mean what he's saying? Em's like, at the, by the way, for listeners, if we get to the end of a podcast and Em's like, right, I've got to go for something to eat and that's it. There's no convincing her to stay on. Do you know what? So like, no, someone... I'm hungry. I've had enough. I'm going. <laughs> someone messaged me on Instagram saying, it was such a funny message as well. I wish I had it word for word in my head, but it was something on the lines of, I've wanted to tell you this for a while now. I find you quite harsh and abrasive, but yet also like very caring and compassionate. Like basically they contradict each other. But I asked one of my friends, I was like, do you, like, do you think I'm harsh and abrasive? And she was like, well, like, it's just like, I wouldn't say harsh and abrasive. She's like abrasive, not so, but she's like, most people when they're like gonna hang up the phone they kind of like build up to it so it's like okay well what are you up to tomorrow all right well have a nice time okay well it was lovely to chat to you blah, blah. whereas I'm like right I'm gonna go now and then I just hang up yeah there's <laughs> no buy and I would liken that to if, if you watch an American movie you'll notice no one says bye they just hang up do so they not? Do you know where I think I might get it from not sure but my mum's taken to not even saying hello when she answers the phone like, I'll call her on the why phone. Why do you say hello? There's no point. Because then you know that someone's there. Oh, I and see. She, she's she just doesn't like... say anything. <laughs> and just then I'm like, weed. I'm always like, hello. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> the fact right. I answered the phone suggests that I'm ready to hear what you've yeah, got to say. That's basically one yeah. would not like to say hello. <laughs> exactly. That's hilarious. I have taken to just saying, okay, bye, when I finished a conversation. With, but I only really do that with people who I know Imagine quite you did well. that with your <laughs> patients. Okay, bye. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, this appointment is finished. To be fair, I think that you would have to be very good at rounding up a conversation because otherwise patients don't leave, do they? I've noticed well, that my GP is very good at that. She's like, okay, well, I think that's all we have time for. Bye. And I'm so like, it's, it's really oh. interesting, actually, because, there's, like, obviously we have a lot of training in things like communication skills. And because it's time limited one of the things that you learn about consultation style is, is how, you know, how to, you know, when you need to change the direction of a conversation, like say, let's say, for example, if you ask somebody a question and you, you know, it's a yes or no answer and you've got the yes, but you, but they often carry on telling you a lot of details that you don't really need to know and you need to get other details. It's like ways of, of carefully changing the direction of that other conversation without being interrupting or rude or, or making people feel like you're not listening to them. Um, is that a and, disc? Do you use disc at all? No, what's that? Personality profiling based on colours and certain traits that people have. Oh, you mean like the people yellow and red and personality? Yeah, I've I've had had to deal with them. But yeah, no, it's on, on the communication occurs on the terms of the listener. So it's adjusting your communication style based on who you're talking to. Well, so yeah, but it's, I guess what we learn is very specific to medical consultation so it's what we talk about is that a consultation should be patient-centered rather than doctor-centered so it's not about I'm telling you this and I, I this is my agenda like I you know and my agenda is I want to find out your diagnosis I want to give you your treatment and I want you to to be done within 10 minutes it's more about what what does this person want to get out of this consultation and figuring that out is half of the half of the thing because that's how you'll complete a consultation by achieving what the patient is there for, but what the patient is there for isn't necessarily always obvious. Like for example, the person, you know, the typical example would be the person that wants to talk about, you know, their mental health or something like a personal or embarrassing problem or something that they're quite worried about might be quite serious, but they, they, they sort of say, Oh, I've got this pain in my wrist or something, something that seems fairly trivial because they're, a bit embarrassed about starting the conversation and they're trying to build up to what it is that they want to talk about etc so anyway um where were we going with this conversation dan why are you laughing so i know why dan's <laughs> laughing and i'm not going to go into it dan just a child to... it's been too long it's been too long anyway what, building up to something no i'm not that much before anymore. then <laughs> um so <laughs> We were basically gonna gonna today talk a little bit about our 2020s and our experience with what has happened. But I feel like there was an unsaid part of that 
Oh yeah, saying goodbye to people and then, yeah, anyway, carry on. So yeah, so we were going to talk about our 2020s and how different everything has been, which we've spoken about a little bit, but we just didn't really want this to be another story about COVID. Um, but it's difficult to not talk about things that are topical. There's obviously quite a lot of promising news that's happening at the moment. I think, you know, you've got, with the vaccine, obviously, we've well, got... You're, you're a big pharma shill, aren't you? You're going to be grabbing people shill. off the street, and this streets and jabbing this needle in the, everyone's arms. So this is what's super interesting to me, is that we, we're currently in a situation where, like, I kind of feel like I, I put out a fair amount of information on my social media and talk about things like this, and... It's difficult because I think for the for the most part, generally people who follow a you know who follow doctors on social media are probably don't think that doctors are big you know big pharma shills, and probably are fairly sensible about things like vaccines and stuff. But there's obviously a lot of misinformation and a lot of people who are really really poorly informed. Um, and so it's so what I've been really interested in seeing recently is other people and how they've responded to you know, vaccines versus anti-vaxxers and all that kind of stuff. Like James Smith put out a really, like a very, very sweary, but very, very articulate post about like the anti-vax kind of agenda and just really like addressed all of the arguments in such a clear way. And it just made me realize watching it that actually I can bleat on about it all I want, but essentially I'm just bleating, it, bleating on about it to people who already probably agree with me anyway mm. whereas what we really need to to see is people you know people with big followings people with non-medical followings people with you know because at the end of the day people just know what they see and most people believe what they see so if all you've seen on your facebook is people posting like untrue statistics about how many people have been killed by vaccines or whatever that are just basically made up then of course you're going to believe it. And it would almost be bizarre if you weren't scared of a vaccine when you, when all you see is that. Whereas obviously when all you see is people going, yay, vaccines, you're going to go, yeah, cool, vaccines. You know, like, so there's so much, there's so many people. Like, I think, you know, we've lost the anti-vaxxers for sure. They're, they're anti-vaxxers, it's too late. Well, they were anti-vaxxers before that. I, I don't think... Yeah, yeah, that's my point. There's, there's no all changing their mind. that have no, no opinion on it. Heard. Yeah. yeah. And there's all these people who have no opinion on it. And they're the ones that I worry about because they're the ones who are currently in the process of developing a false opinion based on terrible Facebook information. Well, I think one of the main issues is people don't know how to argue back or like not even argue back. But if someone says to me like, oh, but, you know, what about all the risks? Like, we don't know what's going to happen. Like people don't know how to respond to that. Like, oh no, I, d I don't really know. Like if we just go through, what are the potential risks? Mm -hmm. How likely they are to happen? Because the truth is some people will have a negative like reaction to the virus, to the virus, to the vaccine. And in the same way that some people will die if they eat a peanut. Yeah. It doesn't mean that we've banned peanuts for everyone. And yeah. in fact, even in that situation, you're like, well, there's not a huge benefit to eating peanuts apart from they taste nice. So why wouldn't you yeah. ban for everyone? But with a vaccine, it's like, yeah, there will be people that respond badly, but it's unavoidable. Like it, and the good far outweighs the bad. And I think people don't also don't realize the process that's already been happening. Into, like there have been studies, we have got evidence that a lot vaccine of these like... research has been over the last ten years. It's okay that everyone's put their foot on the gas hmm. and developed something very quickly now, but it's not new science or technology. It's been there, and it just because of that whole minuscule global pandemic thing, people put their foot on the gas to get something developed for the health and safety of everyone else on the planet. Yeah, you know and what it is new and quite interesting. Well really interesting and i didn't know enough about and maybe we could get on um someone who knows much more about this than i do but th they're using an rna vaccine yeah or at least one of them is which uh, if you can translate some of the science behind that to other things like cancer that could be a far better way to treat certain cancers it might not work for all of them but it's basically allowing you to target certain cells so instead of getting chemo and hoping that the cancer cells die before you basically die and that it's not very specific in its way of targeting things. 
this can make it way more specific in terms of targeting the actual cancer cells. So treatment could be far better, which is really interesting and exciting. If that yeah, exactly. same biology works. Yeah. And that's, that's what they've been, been working on for, for quite a long time. And it's, it is bizarre how, I mean, it, it makes you think like, like someone said, oh, that like I saw a meme today that said that bridge is only 99% effective. So I think I'll swim, you know, and it is kind of, it, it's, it's strange because people don't have a grasp of what it is that they're rejecting or agreeing to. It's a bit like saying, I mean, if you go to a restaurant, how many people go, oh, what, what do you mean they're going to give me food and I don't know what the ingredients are? You know, like, you don't know what you're eating when you eat something that comes from a packet, but you trust that there are enough regulations in place by regulatory bodies to ensure the safety of, of, of what you're putting into your body. But for some reason, and I think that it's got a lot to do with the fact that you know, people are very suspicious of, of big companies and things. And I, like, I get that. I understand people being suspicious of their motives, but in what way would it be beneficial for a huge corporation to like to risk their whole reputation on it? Like, you know, if it's not going to be good for them if their vaccine is dangerous, is it? Mm. And, and to suggest that, that everyone else in the world is behind it and on board with it and that there are se secret envelopes of cash being delivered to GPs all over the over the nation. And I think, yeah, exactly, Mike. And I think people give the government too much credit. So one minute everyone's criticising them for their failings, that everyone's like, oh, they're all in on it. Yeah. I think you give them too much credit. Yeah, we can't <laughs> even set up COVID testing, let alone like surveillance yeah. via vaccines. Come on. Exactly. Yeah. And you're not in that important. Like who, yeah. who cares? <laughs> and yeah, that's the other thing. I'm like, why <laughs> if someone wants to follow me around via like see where I can go, I don't know. It's just it is it's strange. And I think there's still people who think that there's a cure for cancer and things. And you just think even if you just break mm. that down into what would need to be going on and to, like look at all the people whose jobs it is to research like to work for cancer research and all the you know money that's spent on treatments and all these kind of things like there is absolutely no way that there would oh it's just it's crazy and it suggests that you know that like the, and this is the thing about covid being a scam and all of that kind of stuff and it being planted or whatever and you just think well Surely if you were going to invent, invent a fake virus, you wouldn't let people like famous people die of it. Do you know, like it just it kind of, you think that the people would be in on it and not get it. Like, anyway, 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 we're going too deep into it. Too we deep. Are, I feel like this could be a, a special one. But yeah, it's, um, it is interesting. And that what I do think it's, sorry to interrupt you, if anyone is interested about this, because it was kind of, it was never planned. It was pre-corona, wasn't it? And we got Dr. David Robert Grimes on originally oh, yeah. for our first episode to talk about conspiracy theories, but he also delved quite deeply into, and this was vaccines pre-COVID yeah. and everything else uh, and thought processes and false balance and critical thought and how many people's brains are, I mean, I, I did, I just, someone reminded me the other day using SPSS at uni and trying to translate stats and data and that is, if you've ever done it, a period of your life where you are devoting time to learning a special skill and you still can't do it. Yeah. Yet people think they can pick up a newspaper and, oh, look at all these stats. I can make sense of that and interpret it, interpret it for the world. Yeah. I'm getting a bit ranty now. Let's back off that. Let's back off that. So what we were going to talk a bit about today was how, because of my brush with COVID, we've had our schedule a bit offset. So what we thought we would do is now that we're getting to the bit where we're approaching Christmas, we thought we'd take this opportunity to just get out our Fitness Unfiltered live podcast, which we still haven't uploaded fully yet, um, and then get cracking in the new year so that we, we get back on track with series three in the new year. But we just thought we would check in with everybody and let you know what's been going on. And that it's not, it's, I feel, I always get really frustrated when I, listen to podcasts or you know follow episodes of things on youtube and everyone's like yeah guys we're back we're like recording regularly now it's gonna be loads more content and then like two <laughs> weeks later there's nothing um and we have and to have a discussion off air about this 
weird Where's ca- caricature you keep falling into every time you do an impression of yourself now <laughs> it's mike's influencer voice. that's my that's that's the that's how influencers sound hi guys just thought i'd let you know like it's just so what, many people have been asking for this so. there's just so many questions in my dms asking about what app that is that i use and actually it's this app it's um, actually this app and this is my discount code exactly um it's actually a hybrid of the uh, no, i'm not gonna go anyway um so um do you guys have anything else that you want to tell everybody i feel like we're running out of time we really haven't left a lot of time for this at all I have we I, I, just, don't, um, I don't dan i don't think uh, people need more of this <laughs> no <laughs> so that's a very good point wrap up in um, yes. um in an abrasive have... fashion um <laughs> And maybe we could just say that we've got some really big plans for 2021. Yeah, that, and that's like the space. fitness industry pledge. We can't big talk about stuff just going yet. on. We can, we're not yeah. allowed to talk about any of it just yet, unfortunately. But as soon as we can share them with you guys, we'll totally let you know. But only if you're on the mailing list, yeah. which we don't have. So <laughs> maybe not that. So oh, no, we have, to have a mailing list, haven't we? We've got a mailing list. We, we've we've done and started many things we have never fully you know t-shirts yeah like t-shirts, the website 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 we don't finish t-shirts. anything we're unfiltered and unfinished <laughs> we should change our name to fitness unfinished <laughs> oh gosh that's actually a really good name for a podcast i, I do don't think steal probably, it audience <laughs> probably we should probably just just thank people for sticking with bearing with being patient staying with us as fans because we do on some subconscious fans. level fans I don't think we have fans no our audience Okay. I'd oh, like, some, some... I would always, I've always wanted to say I just want to thank my fans, but I don't think that's something that's... Well, I, I feel like it's okay to say about the podcast, just not about us personally, because it kind of has gone a lot downhill since the live. <laughs> the Dan, the you live conference. Your attention to that. <laughs> no, but... I actually, no, I dispute that. I don't think it has. I think no. our guests, the last couple of guests have been unbelievable we've had some phenomenal podcasts actually and since the since the live i think our regularity has waned a little bit and i think yeah, that's been that's what i bet not the people it's just been, been basically because 2020 has got in the way for us like it has for so many people but big plans for 2021 oh yeah i can't wait can't wait though yeah um okay bye okay bye bye